Item number one is a Max Cole parabolic spark transmitter. It utilizes a Rigi spark gap system. You'll notice the vent viewing hole in the middle. That was to note the amount of Vaseline that was deposited, which helps dampen the waves and protects the spark balls. It's a uh, spark transmitter that operates in the 450 megahertz range. It was manufactured by Max Kohl, who was located in Chemnitz, Germany. They were a well-known scientific instrument manufacturer, and they ended up being one of the first manufacturers of any type of wireless apparatus in the world. On the right-hand side, opposite, is item number two. That's the matching coherer receiver, also made by Max Kohl, and it uses... Uh, a zinc panel for the reflecting material mounted in a wooden frame. It was sold as a matching set. This spark transmitter and coherer receiver date from 1898 to about 1903. They would represent among the earliest complete transmitter and receiver on public display in the United States. Item number three is an original broadside dated April 1898. It's the oldest known broadside describing Marconi's lecture and practical demonstration of his system of wireless telegraphy by Mr. William Lind. He was assisted by Mr. W.W. W. Bradfield, one of Mr. Marconi's assistants in his early experiments. Number four is the front page of the New York Herald, dated August 7th, 1865, which celebrates the telegraph across the Atlantic. This was to remain working until this day. Uh, there was a prior Atlantic cable laid in 1858, which lasted for less than a month, but then it took till 1865 to lay another successful cable, and this one was very successful. Number five is an early light galvanometer from approximately 1890, built by the Elliott Brothers, London. It has a tag on there denoting that it was used at the General Electric Company in Schenectady, New York. Item 6 is an original kerosene lantern used on board the Great Eastern Ship during the laying of the transatlantic cable. This was for use in producing a light source for the early cable galvanometer. It dates from 1865. Item 7 is a Western Electric Laboratory Galvanometer. This is a precision instrument produced by Western Electric about 1880 and was used in a laboratory for telegraphic work. Item number 8 is a moving magnet reflecting galvanometer built by Elliott Brothers in London. It dates from 1875. Image number nine depicts a Lodge and Muirhead Syndicate wireless telegraph component. After further investigation, it appears that this is a mercury interrupter that controlled the spark coil output of the transmitter. This was discovered at the Mare Island Navy Yard in the 1960s. I believe this is one of the two samples sent by the Lodge and Muirhead Company in London to the U.S. Navy for use in their 1902 test of all the available wireless systems on the market. The Navy ended up choosing Telefunken the next year in 1903, later regretted their choice as World War I was on the horizon and the Navy ships were equipped with German transmitters and receivers. Image number 10 depicts a Radige and Massiel telegraph receiver. This includes a telegraph indicator with a bell and a paper tape recorder to record the dots and dashes. Uh, this is a piece of laboratory apparatus or for home use rather than uh, commercial grade equipment. It dates from the uh, turn of the century about 1900 and appears to be complete. Image number 11 is a Benjamin Pike 
Junior cylindrical electrostatic machine using a glass barrel shaped cylinder mounted in horizontal wooden bearings on two wooden posts. This was used to generate high voltage and sparks to demonstrate to a class or used in a laboratory for testing purposes. This dates from approximately 1843 to 1864 as indicated by the signature on the collector. It says uh, Benjamin Pike Jr. 294 Broadway, New York City. And there was only one Benjamin Pike Jr. listed in the scientific instrument makers and he was located during that 21 year period. Item number 12 is a Henley Telegraph Apparatus Company Needle Telegraph. This dates from 1853 and is the matching component to item number 13, which is the Henley Electromagnetic Telegraph Transmitter, also from 1853. Uh, the transmitter weighs about 30 pounds and is uh, a very solid instrument. As you notice, both have matching binding posts and matching pedestal feet. The transmitter has a single handle which actuates two coils which cut through the magnetic lines of force on the horseshoe magnets and sends a signal to the needle telegraph which deflects it. By reading the dots and dashes on the panel you can determine whether it's an A, a B, a C, or so forth. Image number 14 is a plunger type ammeter. This is very early construction and very primitive. Binding posts indicate that it dates from about 1870. There is no manufacturer's name visible. Item number 15 is a Davidson and Connor voltmeter circa 1865. It's a very large instrument mounted in a rosewood cabinet. I've done a search and could find no indication of this company. As of today, Washingtonville, Ohio only has 730 residents. It borders with the uh, state of Pennsylvania and there's no information on this instrument at all. It's uh, very primitive, probably built just after the Civil War. Photo number 16 is an original fragment from the antenna that Marconi used in his country's home in Bologna, Italy. It dates from 1896 and was obtained in this ornamental box from the family of Bellini. Uh, Bellini and Tossi were the inventors of the direction finder, but 1909, lifelong friends of Marconi, and Marconi presented him with this fragment in 1896. Image number 17 is a Glausen and Bronck Rigi type spark gap. It's circa 1900 and would utilize a Vaseline in between the spark balls inside. You'll notice a hole at the top where the Vaseline was put in. Uh, the Vaseline would cut down on the arcing between the balls and they would uh, last a lot longer. A piece that would have been used in a laboratory or in a commercial basis. Image number 18 is a replica of a Hertz resonator circa 1895 to 1900. This would have been patterned after Hertz's original resonator which he used in his experiments in 1888 and he wrote his book Electric Waves in 1893 on it. And this would have been uh, constructed for demonstration purposes. Image number 19 is a Morris E. Leeds variometer. It's depicted in the 1902 catalog and would have been used in a laboratory setting it's large and heavy and would have been used in early variable inductance experiments. The year after, in 1903, Morrissey Leeds merged with Northrop to form the Leeds and Northrop Company, as indicated by the catalogs from 1903 on up. Image number 20 depicts on the left side a natural example 
of a piece of lodestone. It's a uh, natural magnet and the item on the right side would have been a mariner's lodestone. This would have been used on board a ship to calibrate a compass. This would have been kept in the captain's locker or in his suite. This particular item was found in a monastery in southern Austria and it dates from approximately 1750. It's the oldest item on display in the museum. Image 21, book titled The Letter of Petrus Peregrinus on the Magnet, A.D. 1269. This was the first important published work on the lodestone or the magnet. It's a facsimile printed edition, uh, first reprinted in 1904. This particular copy was found at the Franklin Institute Library. Image number 22 shows an early bell system, butter stamp style telephone receiver. This would be dated from 1880 to 1882. One of the first commercial receivers on the market. Image number 23, a Blake style telephone transmitter box, also known as a microphone. It's dated approximately 1880 and is possibly made by Thomas Edison Company. Image number 24 is a historic humpback telegraph key, possibly made by Thomas Hall, scientific instrument makers, approximately 1850. This had once been in a Princeton University collection and was donated by Howard Schrader in the 1970s. Image number 25 is an early weight-driven telegraph register between 1855 and 1865. It utilized a strip of paper. The impressions of a dot or a dash would have been pushed into the paper for a recording purposes. The weight was suspended by a string and down through a hole in the base of the register and would have hung down between the legs of the telegraph operator at his desk. Image number 26 is a Western Union telegraph galvanometer. This is a laboratory model in its original case, a fine instrument. This was owned by John Barker Stearns. He was the inventor of the duplex telegraph in Boston, Massachusetts. It's a very heavy instrument and is complete. Image number 27 is a Chester Company humpback key. This was donated by Bruce Rollison to the AWA Museum in 2009. Image number 28 is a Chubbuck Company weight-driven register manufactured in Utica, New York by one of the earliest telegraph manufacturers. Dates from about 1855 to 1865 and is complete with some of the original string attached. Image number 29 is a George Phelps telegraph sounder dating from about 1860 to 1868. This is a round sounder and was popular during the Civil War. It is complete and all original. Image number 30 is a Walter Phillips step lever patent key made by the LG Tillotson Company. A tag is attached showing that it was used by George Barlow of Rochester, New York at the Lehigh Valley Railroad Depot and it was used around the year 1900. Image number 31, a street laver key by LG Tillotson, New York. It's mounted on a shield shaped base dates from 1880. Image number 32 is an LG Tillotson telegraph sounder circa 1870 to 1875 and all parts are original to the piece.